Steph Beckett here. I am a guest host stepping in here for Megan and welcome to Launch Code Decoded, where we go behind the scenes of the hottest tech events, products and services. So today I am joined by Abigail Honor of Lorem Ipsum and we're going to be talking about the latest sources for fresh content ahead of her session at DSE 2022. So thanks for hopping on and chatting with me today, Abigail. You're welcome, Steph. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course. So, yes. So, as I mentioned, you are speaking at Digital Signage Experience in Las Vegas next month. So, first of all, tell me a little bit about your session. Okay. So, our session is called Latest Sources of Fresh Content. And um, I'll be there with Brian Mazaras. He's the CEO and founder of OpenEye Global. Um, he is an amazing leader in the field of digital strategy um, and experience. And I'm looking forward to, he's also a friend. I'm looking forward to, to discussing um, content with him. And also on the panel with me will be Megan Atavlay. She's an interactive out of home display specialist. So I'm also excited to hear her perspective on our business. Very cool. Yeah. So sp about the subject matter. So what is a simple way to determine like what type of content works for a specific environment? So what we usually do is we do a study of the environment, the location, how people use the area, the location, mm -hmm. how they pass through, where the actual location for the content, where the screen would be. Um, so we do a lot of sort of initial data research um, before we even start brainstorming the content, because it's really important to understand how the people will use the space and how they'll experience the content we create. And so once we understand that, that really helps inform us in terms of the creative content, the way we're going to tell the story, um, if it's going to be mostly graphics, if it's text, um, if we can tell an entire elaborate story if it's episodic um, so a lot is we visit the venue um, and do that sort of deep dive on the site itself um, and we have to do that if it's content the same content that's going to play in different locations we also have to go to all the different locations to make sure that we understand all the limitations and really plan the content so it's going to resonate it's going to hit home and people are actually going to watch, stand and watch and see for sure. So what are some of your favorite sources for content creation inspiration? This is a great question. Um, so I do a lot of internet searching. So when it yeah. comes to inspiration, it's still for me the best place to go. I will Google crazy words or, or ideas that pop in my head, um, like, you know, see-through balloon floating in Times Square or what, whatever it is, or, you know, light reflecting um, off a diamond. And I will sort of get visual stimulation. I'm a real visual storyteller. That's my, yeah. my background. I did fine art painting and filmmaking. So I get very inspired by what things look like. If you look at my telephone, it's full of moments from anywhere. I could be going on a walk to the office. I could be on vacation, um, out to dinner with friends. And if I see something that I think, oh, that really piques my interest creatively, I'll snap photos. So a lot of my time is spent, I have a little folder called Inspo going through my phone when we have to think about content and angles and something fresh and new and looking at that image to uh, to sort of get inspired and turned on for exactly the story we're going to tell. The other thing we do actually is if it's for a brand, we do a lot of listening. So we go on social media, we listen to people who are fans of super fans of the brand, and we start to really try to understand what is it about this product or this story that's resonating. And we try to really sort of climb inside the head of those advocates, the people who love the brand and understand why and tell stories that are going to connect with them. Right. That makes a lot of sense. So when you were talking about your inspo folder and like, you know, when you never, you need something fresh, you go and look at that. How do you help clients ensure that their content is always fresh? That's a great question. So one of the things is to make sure that you're, when you're putting the content up there, you're actually checking that you're getting good ROI. What is working? And, you know, that could be an, something out of home. It could be some metrics when it's some uh, digital signage online and make sure that people are interacting with it the way you anticipated. So there's a, we make sure that we do that often and we can iterate content and A-B test um, in terms of keeping things really fresh. When it comes to fresh ideas for a brand, 
that's sort of why people hire us. I think if you want something different um, or you're tired of or you want to pivot for the brand or you want to reach a new audience, I think that's really our specialty uh, because we come up with really fresh perspectives. Sitting at the table, we have all different kinds of people from all different walks of life. So when we brainstorm, we bring a variety of perspectives. Um, and I think that diversity is hugely important when it comes to content creation. And our clients have really valued that and really value that fresh content that we sort of never tire of creating new things that's we don't want to try and repeat what's already been done right. it's really challenging Steph it's easy to say that it's hard to really yeah. be unique you tend to it's always an amalgamation in some way shape or form of something someone has said or something you've seen uh, for sure we, because that's just what what's out there to be inspired by you know so that makes yeah. a lot of sense too. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I can yeah. imagine that's like, it's a difficult, it's like easy in theory, but very difficult in execution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when we've had times when we thought we'd come up with something really unique and then somebody would post something on a channel and be like, look, it's already been done. And you're like, oh no, okay, we're <sighs> yes. going to go in a different direction. Exactly. So um, what's one thing that you would like attendees to take away from your DSE session, which will be Thursday, November 17th. That's going to be from 4 to 4.45 p.m. I'm really hoping that they understand the importance of collaboration because we really need to work with fabricators, with AV teams when we're creating content because I really feel like only through this collaboration of the creative team and the team that brings it to life physically can you really make something innovative something different and so I really want us to all start talking more and um, you know have a shared respect for the different perspectives and what we both bring to the table uh, so I'm hoping that everybody understands that you know content creatives are here to make the fab the the con the actual hardware look amazing and make it something that people are like wow because if we work together we can truly make something really impressive. Exactly. So last question from me: If people want to connect with you, where can they find you? I think the best place to connect with me is on LinkedIn, and it's at Abigail Honor. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy when people reach out. I really believe in community building. I really be, believe in strength in numbers and sharing ideas. So, yeah, please, everybody reach out to me on LinkedIn. All right. Sounds good. Well, Abby, thank you so much for hopping on to this episode with me today and uh, accepting me as your guest host. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Steph, for having me. I'm very excited for DSE. I'm really looking forward to speaking and meeting everybody out there. Yeah, I'll see you there. Sounds good. And don't forget to register for DSE. You can go to digitalsignageexperience.com. Use the code RAVEGIFT for your free exhibit hall pass, and we will see all of you in Las Vegas as well. So this has been another episode of Decoded, and we will see you next time.